Hi, folks. Thank you so much for joining CHCH's spring boarding trial webinar. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, we are going to uh, have a, a bit of a, a back and forth, a conversation about your experience in the boarding program. Um, thank you all for being here on a, a beautiful Monday afternoon. Um, I'd love to first start off with uh, just a quick in introduction um, uh, to tell us a little bit about uh, your favorite spot on campus. Introduce yourself and then uh, share your favorite spot on campus. Who would like to go first? Yeah, Lachlan. Um, my name's Lachlan, yep. And uh, I'm a junior here. Uh, and my favorite spot on campus is probably the uh, Worcester Lounge, which is uh, the boys dorm. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's a really nice place just to come together and do whatever, like board games, video games, homework even. It's really nice. Yeah, that's great. That's actually uh, a topic I'm going to ask you to talk about because I know that you are a leader in that space, yeah. um, creating community. So uh, thanks for mentioning that. That's a great segue that we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Paris, would you please uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Paris. I'm in the 11th grade also. Um, this question is really easy for me to answer. I feel like I knew my answer right away. It would definitely be the dining hall. I can say from the moment I started at CHCH, I feel like most most of my friendships have started off in the dining hall, meeting people in there. I mean, the first person that introduced himself to me, Avery, was in the dining hall. I feel like I've had some of my best conversations in the dining hall. I, you know, I, I'm very shy, so... I feel like that, you know, when I first started here, going to sit down in a dining hall, I feel like you're bound to end up talking to someone or meeting someone new that you probably didn't know before going in there because it's, you know, you're, you're sitting down across from people next to people. So I can definitely say I've had some of my fondest memories and conversations in the dining hall. <laughs> I love that. So uh, a really nice place for community as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Hi, Rest. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you so much. I know that you're, uh, uh, I pulled you out of class for this and I really appreciate you taking the time because uh, I really value your opinion. Um, were you on the call when you were uh, with the instruction? Just introduce yourself and then tell us your favorite spot on campus. Um, my name is Rest Afalabi. I'm in ninth grade and my favorite spot on campus is the Clemens Room because oh, on the weekends, my friends and I can just hang in there and have fun and watch a movie or something. I love that. We're going to talk about the Clements Room too. Um, and I'm really excited because I have residents of Worcester and a resident of Harrington here. So it's a, a pretty wide um, range of where we're living. Um, Miss Martin, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, happy to be here. Yes, indeed. Uh, what is your favorite spot on campus? I immediately fell in love with... Um walking through the reservoir and hearing the waterfall and um, watching the, you know, the, the colors of the trees change and just that middle part of campus with the water is just so soothing and relaxing. And it's my favorite part of campus. That's awesome. That is mine too. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm particularly excited to have you on the call too, because you have a very unique perspective. You have two students here at CHCH, one in the boarding program and one in the day program. So I'm very, very, I'm very, very curious to hear more mm -hmm. about your experience. Um, and uh, Ms. Hall, hello, would you please introduce yourself? Hello, I am Tammy Hall. I'm Lachlan's mother. Um, and the Lachlan, this is Lachlan's first year at CHCH and he's loving living on campus. I love hearing that. Lachlan, I'm sure your ears are ringing. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, I, I, I couldn't help but uh, knowing that the two of you would, were available and willing, I'd love to hear uh, more of a back and forth if you have um, uh, uh, family stories, anecdotes about living on campus, I'd love to hear that. Uh, but last but not least, Lisa, would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Pellerin, Director of Enrollment Management here at CHCH in my 21st year. Um, I also spent 10 years as a dorm parent in um, both of the girls' dorms and um, 
just love the connections that I've, I've made through the years. Uh, I share a similar um, favorite spot as Kia and uh, Michael. When I came to interview here myself and had the tour of campus, I just absolutely fell in love with the pond. Mm -hmm. And I was just amazed that in a busy city of Waltham that there is just this peaceful, quiet serenity right in the middle, middle of campus. Um, I would say, especially in the fall when all the trees are changing colors, it's just really just, you know, when I'm having a stressful day or whatever, I just go for a walk and kind of sit on the bench outside the pond and it's just um, really relaxing and peaceful. So that's my that's favorite. Awesome. That's yeah. right. We do compete with a large family of geese on campus, but we all coexist quite well. That <laughs> um, let's, um, are, are we ready for questions? I'm, I'm super excited to ask questions of our, our panel here. Uh, my name is Michael Buckley. I'm the director of Campus Life. And um, what I'm, I'm curious um, to know, uh, first off, the um, uh, uh, halls, would you please tell us, um, why does the boarding program benefit your family? Why why choose the boarding program? Um, to help Lachlan grow his independence and get ready for college. Like we thought it would be very helpful for him to go away with um, in a more structured environment with sort of those guardrails and the mandatory study hall and to just help him learn how to manage his schedule and even how to manage his money. He had a summer job this past summer and saved up a bit of money and they go on weekend excursions and he's in charge of figuring out how much to spend so that his money lasts him the whole school year. And he's been doing a great job with that. I love that. Lachlan, do you agree? I think so. I mean, <laughs> um, I think boarding is especially nice just because <clears throat> of like the whole homework situation. Uh, myself as an individual, I just don't see like um, home, like a home environment as a working environment. So it's sure. very helpful to have um, a school environment as a home environment so I can like work and also live there. It's really nice. For so it's the, the being in a place sort of helps you focus is what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Uh, this is actually a great segue. Um, Paris and Lachlan, could you please tell us a little bit about study hall? I know that Worcester Hall um, has a little bit of a different um, routine when it comes to study hall. Paris, would, do you mind, uh, do you mind uh, fielding yeah, that question? <clears throat> I can speak on that. So, you know, study hall is from 7.30 to 9.30 uh, every day. Well, every day that we have school the next day. So that would be Sunday nights, Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Thursday nights. We have study hall. <clears throat> and study hall for the ninth and the 10th graders, they go to Wilkins. They go to, you know, the educational building on campus. They leave the dorm, they go there, and they do their work there from 7.30 to 9.30. And then for the 11th and 12th graders, we're able to stay in the dorm and we keep our doors open and just work at our desk. But, you know, it's a it's a very structured routine that I think helps a lot because I think as teenagers, you know, it's definitely difficult. And being that we're independent, we're, you know, our parents aren't here to kind of guide us on what we're doing. Do this now, do this now, do this now. I think it helps to have that one set time in the day that's just dedicated to everything academic, you know, completing homework, studying, reading a book for English, anything like that, it's, it's a very helpful time. It definitely, it gets you into that mode that, you know, you know, I have to get some, I have to get things done during this time. And then after that, everything's to yourself. Great. So juniors and seniors have the option of staying in dorm in their yes. room to study, mm -hmm. but then uh, ninth graders and 10th graders have that space, that sort of separate space in Wilkins that I, I don't think we mentioned this, but it is monitored by a teacher. Uh, yeah. A dorm parent is there to help troubleshoot. Um, how often do you do you uh, reach out to the adults on duty for for help? How often do you do that? Me personally, I don't do it that often anymore. But last year, I can say having a dorm parent around was definitely super super helpful. I mean, especially with math. I remember we had a teacher here last year, Miss Wong, and she was so tremendously helpful. I can remember so many nights where. I was struggling with my Algebra 2 homework and I messaged her on Remind, which is how we, the students communicate with the dorm parents and asked her to come help me with my Algebra 2 homework. And she did, and it was, it was great. It was a helpful thing. And then even with other subjects, like maybe two or three, a week before break, I had a history essay that was due. And 
my teacher is Mr. McPhail, who was one of the head dorm parents in the dorm. And I remember he was on duty one night and I just went down there to the lounge and he was able to help me with my essay. So it's definitely very, very convenient always having a teacher around to help you with anything that you might need academic wise. So it's very helpful. Thank you. That's, that's great. Rest, you are a resident of Harrington Hall. Um, would you talk a little bit about what study hall is like in Harrington and then also do you use the art barn? Do you use the art barn space as a place to get work done as well? So tell us a little bit about study hall in Harrington and the art barn, if you can. In Harrington, the ninth and 10th graders go downstairs to the Clements room to have study hall from 7.30 to 9.30. And the 11th graders keep their doors open in their dorms and they do study hall. And I take guitar, so I do use the art barn frequently to practice my guitar skills because study hall is supposed to be homework time. Truly, truly. Um, I'm gonna get back to you a little later. I'm curious to know your experience in the weekends about weekend activities, but that I'll ask that later. Uh, Miss Martin, hello, hello. Uh, would you please tell us uh, why is the boarding program right for your family? This is our first year at CHCH. We have two students there. Our son is in ninth grade and our oldest child is in 10th grade. And so our oldest is the boarder. Our ninth grader is um, a day student. And it has been the right decision, I would say, for our oldest because um, they are extremely relational. And so making those connections with friends, also having the connections with teachers, seeing the teachers in the classrooms and the dorms and also doing extracurricular activities has just allowed them to um, make some really, really strong connections and to get to know others and for people to get to know them and understand them and be able to be there for them. And we are a very close knit family. And so I feel like they have been able to find that same, you know, feeling at school to be very close to their teachers and their friends. That's wonderful. I love hearing that. Students, hearing that, what sort of, uh, what sort of relationships do you, do you, do you form when you are a resident on campus? What sort of special relationships do you have um, uh, with adults on campus as a resident? I guess I can speak on this. I mean, <clears throat> being that we're here, we're obviously on campus more so than we're at home throughout the mm -hmm. school year, at least. So I can say it's that you really form close relationships with all the dorm parents. I mean, I can say they probably <laughs> know just about as much about me as my own mother would because we're, we're here all day so it's like you know it's you know study habits anything we might need the relations the relationships with our parents I feel like they they really get to know us I mean I've been here this past school year and then the one prior to this one and throughout that I mean I've gotten to know Mr. McPhail, Miss Doolin, Miss Henry, Miss Cruz I've gotten to know everyone on such a, I feel like a close level and it feels great. They know me very well. I feel like every resident in Worcester, Harrington, um, South Hall, I feel like we can all say we know the dorm parents so well and they know us equally as well. So it's a good feeling. Love that, love that. Rest, uh, you mentioned weekend activities. Uh, what are some of the weekend activities that you um, that you find really joyful? What, what are the weekend activities that you like? Um, so we've been on a few weekend activities, and one of the ones that I really enjoyed was Roller World. Even yeah. though I didn't know how to roller skate, it was pretty fun being there with my <laughs> friends and just having fun. And I love weekend activities because we always have our little target trips so that we can get any essentials that we need or snacks. And it's just like a fun way to get off of campus and have fun with your friends. Great. And I really appreciated you taking a risk and diving into an activity that you've never done before. And you did really well. Very, very nice. Rest, wear... fun fact, I grew up in that area and roll the world. It's the same as when I was young and had birthday Me too. And Me it's too. literally the same roller skates. No way. <laughs> exact <laughs> same roller skates. Where, and now my that? kids are going to birthday parties there. And I'm like, this place has not changed a bit. So I I'm glad world. you got to experience that rest. <laughs> Lisa, where'd you grow up? In Peabody. Linfield. We'll talk yes. later. That's awesome. <laughs> That's yep. awesome. Hasn't changed uh, a bit. <laughs> it, not at all. Um, 
uh, Ms. Martin and Ms. Hall, tell us uh, some of the weekend activities that you sort of hear through the grapevine. What are the weekend activities that you hear happening um, uh, on campus here that, that have stood out to you? I know that um, Teddy had the opportunity to uh, exhibit some leadership skills and actually was able to lead a baking class um, yeah. over the weekend. Teddy really loves to bake. And so I, I was really excited that it's not only the teachers and the staff planning the actual weekend activities, but students also get that opportunity to um, be leaders and plan things of interest. And so that was a wonderful opportunity and they made some yummy cupcakes. And um, also um, Teddy's interested in D and D Dungeons and Dragons. So they have been able to do Dungeons and Dragons and go to the different movies. And they are often on the mall trip on Fridays. <laughs> So, um, and they really enjoy that. And this past time, they actually went out to dinner afterwards at the Cheesecake Factory. So right. they they really enjoy the shopping trips, but also just being able to do things that they are genuinely interested in. That's awesome. And I think, I think Teddy made beignets once too. Yes, they did. They which did. took actually quite a bit of coordinating on their part. Uh, several different adults needed to be a part of that. So reaching out to the to the dining hall to make sure that the oil right. was ready to go, reaching out right. to me, right. making sure that that uh, ingredients were available. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a lot going on there and a very successful weekend uh, activity. Um, Ms. Hall, how about you? What are sort of, what are some of the weekend activities that you hear about on campus? Um, I think Lachlan enjoys the shopping excursions as well, mm -hmm. and the trip to Dave and Buster's, which was early in the school year. I really yeah. enjoyed that one. Um, I think Lachlan plans video game tournaments too, which is, uh, I think he enjoys planning things and doing uh, planning fun activities for others. Lachlan enjoys doing that. Great. Uh, this is actually a great segue now to Lachlan about you mentioned that communal area uh, in Worcester, the Worcester Lounge, that you have really, uh, uh, you've spearheaded a lot of uh, community with video games. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, every night there's always like, um, I bring out my uh, Nintendo Switch and we just plug it into the TV and we just have some fun playing whatever Mario game there is. And, um, there's always something interesting that happens every night. It's really nice. But um, I wanted to dedicate maybe like a little more time to it. Uh, I think it was, how long was it ago? I don't remember. A couple months ago? A couple months ago, yeah. The yeah. The, the official one, I think, was, was yeah. it during a com community weekend before yeah. break? Yeah. So I wanted to dedicate a little more time to it. So um, I talked to Mr. Buckley and we set up a time to make it like a social tournament gaming event, um, which turned out to be really, really good. And um, it was a lot of fun. I think um, it increased like a huge, made like a huge, a lot of people feel a huge sense of community. Great. And I think, um, that's really like what uh, boarding experiences is looking for and all that. What was the game you played? Oh yeah, Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. And you're gonna let me know if you need any extra cords or any extra controllers yeah. to make these things happen even more, right? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Paris, um, you are an RA on campus. I am. Yes. Yeah. Would you talk a little bit about the added responsibility that that comes with uh, leadership opportunities that we offer in the boarding program? Well, I can, I can say it's, you know, it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility, but I feel like it's definitely, it, it not only, it, this might sound a little strange, but it definitely teaches even more independence than just being here itself has because, you know, it's an added responsibility to the things that you normally have to do being that your parents aren't here guiding you through everything. So doing my homework, doing laundry, making sure my room is clean. There's all, there also comes 
helping out my dorm mates if they might be having a problem if something spilled in the hallway if someone if their heat isn't that strong you know they'll ask me questions can I can I speak to a dorm parent anything like that and then there's of course lights out which is basically the system where you know I knock on people's doors and kind of remind them that you know turn your lights off and like you know start decompressing almost you know the, the idea is to go to bed but you know you never know if anyone's actually going to go to sleep when you ask them to. <laughs> <laughs> true, they, true, no. true, 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 true. <laughs> so, everyone has their own sense of independence too. So right, they can, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I would I would say it's, it's a little bit of a responsibility, but I can say I like it because I mean, I feel like even when I first got here up until now, I got to know everyone a little better and beforehand being that I was an RA. I mean, the RAs come the day before everyone else gets here and the day of we kind of, help everyone get moved in and you know I think there's a few people that can say I was the first student that they spoke to on the first day and I feel kind of good knowing that I was the first person that introduced himself and stuff like that so it's a responsibility but it helps me get to know everyone better and I like being helpful saying that you know I was helpful to you it makes me feel good so absolutely and in my role, you were incredibly helpful. Uh, I'm going to shout you out just right now because your feedback is so specific and so helpful that I, there are several different things, specifically uh, more leadership trainings uh, that we'll, we are going to develop for next year to help support you as an RA. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Paris, for all that you do and being here. Um, Lisa, hello. Hi. I'm so sorry. I, I hope you haven't felt uh, ignored. No, no, no. I'm, I love hearing Oh, this whole conversation. So yes. oh, I love that. I love that. Um, I do have a specific question. In your 21 years here, what makes CHCH boarding stand out maybe from other uh, programs that you know about in the area? Yeah, I think, um, you know, similar, similar to what many of the students have talked about, just I think small boarding schools in general are, I think, are a special, a special place, right? Because, you um, you're in a community that really everybody is known. It's a family, an extended family. Um, so I think I really just have always appreciated the opportunity to get to know students um, as people, not just somebody in my dorm. And, and from hearing the students and parents kind of speaking to that, I think nothing has changed over, over my time here. I think those qualities are just part of the small boarding school experience. Um, I think we're unique where, you know, we're, we are so close to Boston. Mm -hmm. And I think it's... Um, not only for academics and field trips, but also for weekend activities as um, the students and parents have just spoken to that there's a lot to do and there's um, easy access into the city and and uh, not only Boston, but Cambridge and so many historical cities um, near and close to Waltham. So I think that's really a benefit where we're not having to put students in a bus for an hour and a half, two hours just to get somewhere. Sure. Um, and I think, you know, for us to just having international students as part of the community as well um, and students from locally, but also, you know, throughout the U.S., I think just kind of having a small community with so many different students from all over, just, you know, really, truly being in a global community gives a different perspective to that, that I think is just so beneficial before going to college, right? And and um, not only learning how to live with one another, but just people from all over, different cultures, different religions, and, and you know, just different ways people live. So I think that's definitely... Um, something hugely beneficial for our, for our boarding students as well. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so, so much. I think this is actually a great segue to look at the, the chat. There might be a, a couple of questions. Yeah. I was going to say, or what, there's a few questions within. Oh, I'm actually having a tough time looking and finding the, I can the read questions. them. Too. Yes, please. Would you mind? Thank you so much. First um, question. Yeah. How many different dorm parents are there total? Uh, each dorm has five dorm parents and we rotate uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, my my dorm parent night always is Thursday night. I'm always on duty Thursday night. And then um, this weekend I'll have, this will be my weekend on duty. And then uh, we, we, we uh, share responsibility between five five adult dorm parents in each dorm. And then there's also, do you want to talk about the administrator on duty? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Parent? And then there's a, the administrator on duty who is sort of the, the, the super parent who is able to troubleshoot with us um, any things that we might need. Um, 
uh, if there's a, a sprained ankle that needs to go to ur ur urgent care, if there's um, a missing medication, that that AOD is there to uh, help solve problems as well. So there's a ton of adult supervision uh, in the dorms, also in the, the study hall moments as well. Um, absolutely. Yeah. And then the next question kind of goes a little bit along the same lines. How many different dorm parents would a boarder interact with in a week? Oh my God. Every single one, I think. Every single one, because um, the dorm parents are also faculty and staff on campus as well. So you might have a dorm parent in class with you. You might have a dorm parent uh, uh, as a coach after school. Um, a constant sort of um, is that right? I see the students nodding. I think that's yes. a, a fair thing. I mean, like, uh, there are, like, uh, teachers that I have that have developed a more strong connection with, even if they're from an another dorm, right? Like, I've I've uh, taken, like, uh, one of the South Hall's teachers' uh, dogs out for a walk just for fun. Um, they were completely fine with it, you know? It's, it's all, like... Uh, a nice little, uh, it's a nice little like bubble of communication. And mm -hmm. I think it's, um, and you all, you see everybody at breakfast, right? Right. So like um, you get to talk to teachers at breakfast, you get to talk to students at breakfast, it's really nice. And same yeah. thing with like lunch and dinner, but dinner is also more like breakfast in the sense that uh, there's only, um, there's almost always only boarding students. True, true, true. And you and I have uh, very similar uh, schedules because you and I are always in the breakfast hall together at the same <laughs> time, right? Uh, looking for our eggs. Uh, Paris, Paris and Rest, uh, does that, does that, are you able to echo that, your interactions with adults on campus? Yeah, I mean, I can say they're definitely consistent <laughs> throughout, you know, Every day, basically, the weekends have no exclusion. School day or no school day, you're definitely always regularly speaking with a dorm parent because even for weekend activities, there's always a different dorm parent running a different activity, whether that may be an open gym or a trip to Target, a trip to Roller World, you're always interacting with the dorm parent. So, you know, like I said, Mr. McPhail is my history teacher. And he might also be the dorm parent on duty tonight. And then, I, you know, on Saturday, he might also be the one driving us to Target and the bus. So there's definitely a consistent interaction with teachers, dorm parents, because, again, the titles overlap. So, like, Miss McDonald is my English teacher. She might be running a weekend activity to Roller World or something like that. So it's a very consistent interaction with the dorm parents and the teachers. We awesome. also have our day faculty involved. Yes. In our boarding community as well. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. I, Michael, do you want to mention how often they're on duty? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've lived on campus, but. The, the day faculty volunteer their time to cover the, the open gym that happens in the earlier part of the night so that, the, that residents can use the gym right before study hall, get out some uh, uh, fitness. And then the day faculty then moves over to the, to the art barn and then covers over there. So we are very, very lucky to have such generous people with their time. And also the day faculty um, is another sort of uh, adult presence on campus that that helped build those uh, meaningful connections that we talked about. Um, rest, oh, uh, is there another question in the- There are a couple more, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, is, the dorm, is the dorm parent in the dorm all the time other than the school day? Uh, a dorm parent on duty will be in the dorm for the duration of their duty. There will always be an adult uh, on duty in the dorm. So uh, they no check in at dinner time, correct? Uh, they ch they check in after dinner time. After uh, dinner. The ch check ins are uh, at seven thirty and at nine. No, 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 I'm sorry, but the Ooh. dorm parents come on duty, quote unquote. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, Four thirty. Four thirty is the is the official, but. It uh, it it more is a five thirty thing, and uh, everybody who's on duty gathers in the dining hall to go over what the tonight that night's schedule and needs are. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next question is: Will a trial uh, boarder have a roommate? Potentially, potentially, uh, depending on uh, where where they'll be living. Harrington probably will have a roommate, um, and in uh, Worcester, potentially not. Potentially not. There might be some singles available in in Worcester, but then also if if 
uh, uh, somebody who's interested in a boarding trial uh, uh, wants to have a roommate, we might be able to work out a case-by-case -case, um, uh, roommate sort of uh, uh, selection process there. Mm -hmm. And do students have roommates? Yes, there are there are many roommates. Uh, South Hall, which is um, uh, juniors and senior girl identified people, um, they there are triples in South. There are triples in South. There are doubles in Worcester, and there are doubles in Harrington. Um, absolutely. Okay. And I, Lachlan, you don't have a roommate right now. Rest, do you have a roommate? Yes, I have a roommate. She's another uh, freshman. Another freshman. Uh, what was that transition like, having uh, uh, having a roommate to start off with in September? I think it was a pretty smooth transition because me and my roommate have become close and we're friends right now. And we just connected the first day we met. We have a lot in common. I love that. Um, can I Can I piggyback another question right on top? Yeah, um, we've talked about how busy we are on campus and, and a lot of the busy stuff that we do in the activities. But I'm really curious to know, uh, what do you do in the downtime? Because there is some downtime and there is some some breathing room on campus here. Um, when do you find downtime? And when you do, how do you use it? Um, on Wednesdays, we have we have late start. So I do sleep in and I take Good. in that time to rest. And on the weekends, I take in time to sleep, too because I don't want to stress myself out because I'm doing a lot of work over the week. And right. during the week, we also have a lot of downtime. We have clubs, we have office hours, office hours. If you need help with your work, if you're struggling with anything, you can go to a teacher for help and clubs. You can hang out with friends. We all make our different clubs and you there's basketball club, there's volleyball club and you play sports and just have fun. Love that. So it, you, you can elect to, take breaks and to rest if you need to, but then also plug in uh, to activities if you need to. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and then I guess one final question before we look at the brochure that we'll send out to everybody later. I didn't wanna read uh, the brochure uh, this time around, um, but I would like to check on that to make sure that we have all of our points uh, covered. Uh, but before we do, um, Uh, what's the hardest thing about boarding? Let's be real. What's the hardest thing about boarding? What was the 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 hardest transition? The hardest thing to learn? Uh, what was a challenge starting boarding? Lachlan, you want to go first? Um, the bathrooms. The bathrooms. Um, Tell me more. Worcester, right? I mean, there's like it's the locking system is odd because there's two rooms and then a bathroom. Sure. And they don't lock from the inside, they lock from the outside. So you can potentially lock yourself in, it hasn't happened yet. Yep. But it's like a constant worry. So, but there's simple solutions like always having your key on you and all that stuff, you know? Right, talk about, talk about living in community and sort of the culture shock of that, that sharing spaces and sharing communal spaces like a bathroom um, is a is certainly a challenge and something that won't change when yeah. you go to college. So nicely done. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paris, tell me about a challenge you had. Um, I feel like I would maybe just say like adjusting to everyone's schedule almost because, you know, mm. you're living in one structure. So we're very close by whether you have a roommate or not. There's always someone around, even if your door to your room is closed and locked you know, there can very well be someone in the hallway or a lot of people in the hallway that may be, you know, talking or listening to music or running, whatever the case may be, you know, you know, it's a, it's a boy's dorm. So there's definitely times where it may be a little louder stuff. And that's yeah. usually never, that's never really an issue, but I would just say, you know, maybe in the early in the morning, if you're still asleep, you may you hear that your peers are up and wide awake and ready to start their day. Or at night, you know, you may notice that your peers are in the hallway, maybe still, maybe they haven't quite decompressed yet and have gotten ready to go to sleep. But I can say, you know, that's something that, you know, that's something that I feel like is mainly more so an issue in the beginning of the school year, mm -hmm. because I feel like as time goes on, everyone starts to get their schedule down. And I feel like I can definitely say this in all honesty, everyone begins to respect each other's schedule and space. And I feel like that that definitely 
starts to ease up as the school year goes on. So I would definitely say that's not really a problem anymore. But towards okay. the beginning of the school year and last school year, you know, having first time boarders move in, I think everyone is kind of adjusting to their schedule and being around friends all the time. Sure. It's, it's something that, you know, you can get used to. Sure. It's, it sounds like similar uh, growing pains with uh, living in community as well, but specific to sort of noise and uh, yeah. uh, uh, just having people around all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly a challenge, but it's nice to hear that you are, uh, that people are getting used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Rest, what's, what was a challenge? What was a challenge that you faced when you moved onto campus? Um, I'm not local. I'm not from Massachusetts. I'm from New Jersey. So yes, like, you are. it's like missing my family, being mm. homesick. Um, like Paris was saying, being around your friends a lot. Yes, I love living with my friends, but sometimes, you know, I need a break. I miss like being around my family. I miss our tradi traditions. I miss our food. And that's something that's really hard to transition from. And so feeling homesickness and sort of feeling disconnected from your, your family through distance. Um, mm -hmm. How do you manage? How do you get through that? How do you cope? I just call my mom or I call my sister and I just talk to them. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, phone call or FaceTime? FaceTime. Nice, nice. That added that added uh, 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 connection, seeing someone's face. I love hearing that. Um, Miss Martin, a, a challenge that your family might have faced when moving onto campus? We are close, unlike rest. My family, we are like 15 minutes away from the school. But even though we're 15 minutes away, we still, well, at least I don't see Teddy as much as I would like to. Sure. So, sure. Um, you know, parenting from a distance is is very difficult, right? Sure. Like they do, they do have a lot of independence going on. And so you want them to have that independence, but you also want to know what's going on. So that has been our greatest struggle as parents having a boarding student, getting them to want to come home because they want to be with their friends and enjoy the weekend activities. And then also knowing, you know, like how our class is going, what are you doing? Because there's so much support on campus that they do have adults that they can go to constantly. And so we may not be the first to get, you know, those phone calls, even though we still want to be. <laughs> sure. It's interesting to, to hear about homesickness from the opposite perspective, from the parent <laughs> perspective. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Uh, Ms. Hall, what, what's been a challenge? Uh, we're, we're also close, um, so which, which is nice, but, um, you know, Lachlan likes doing the weekend activities at school. So there's times that we miss him. I think he probably stays up later than he should and is tired for class. <laughs> um, but I think that's a good thing for him to sort out for himself is to figure out when, you know, and the part of that learning the independence is that he can um, decide when it's time to go to bed so that he can be fresh in the morning. I love hearing that. Thanks so much. Sorry to, sorry to get called out, Mr. Lachlan. How do you feel? It's fine. You have a great sense of humor. I, I, I can say that that... Uh, doesn't fall far from the tree. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Michael, uh, there was one more question and this might be covered in the PowerPoint that you'll be following up with, but um, one mom wants to know, I'm, if, I am assuming if my child decides and is approved to try the trial, we would get logistic info on what she would need to bring as far as bedding and supplies. Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, it would be over the course of uh, six or seven days. Um, so it would be packing for that length of time. Um, toiletries, bedding, uh, you would need to provide as you, uh, as you uh, move on to campus, but we will cover those logistics um, uh, over the next week. Um, excellent. Um, anything to add before we sort of wrap up with our uh, a quick PowerPoint uh, checklist, making sure that we have covered all of our topics? Again, thanks everybody so much for being here. Uh, and just looking at is everyone able to see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, these were the agendas. Skills for life, embracing Boston, meaningful connections. I think we covered those three big topics there. Independence, leadership, empathy. Um, again, those relationships. Um, Paris talked about uh, leadership uh, and independence. The, the halls just mentioned that.
and embracing Boston. We've had a chance to go on duck tours. Uh, Chinatown was a really, really popular one. Um, Witches Woods, Harvard Square, a, a really great cultural touchstones, very close to Waltham that we can tap into, um, not just Boston. Meaningful connections again. Awesome. We talked about um, co-curriculars and study hall and the timing of that. The weekend activities are sign up. We want to know who's interested so that we can have uh, logistics ready to go. And the boarding trial week, uh, decisions will be made a little later this week. I think the 13th is Thursday, I believe. Um, so we're going to do a rapid. Um, next week, no, not this week, next, next, next Thursday, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, next Thursday, I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, having a little extra uh, time to. Uh, make sure that everyone is a good fit for the program. And uh, just let me know, just let me know if you are interested in uh, being considered by the 10th. Uh, it's just a simple email to me saying that you're interested. And then what I do is I pass that on to the powers that be that then look through paperwork that then um, consult each other and make sure that this is a good fit for the student before they even move in. Um, Michael, there was one more question that just popped up. Um, please. I think would be helpful for everybody. Are students required to return to campus Sunday nights or they can or can they come back Monday morning? Uh, we encourage people to do the study hall, that community study. Um, uh, but if, with family obligations, appointments and things like that, of course, that would just be a simple um, call to the AOD or uh, the administrator on duty. Or um, if you know ahead of time, an email to Miss Stephanie Daniels to let the dorm parents know when the student will be back. Um, we are very, very flexible with timing uh, and especially with familial needs as they come up. Awesome, any more questions in the queue? Those are all of them, great questions. Um, awesome. Um, I'll, I'll take a brief second to give anybody a chance to add another question if there is. And if there isn't, I think we can wrap up here. Uh, everyone, thank you so, so much for uh, spending this afternoon uh, uh, talking with me about the boarding program. I really, really appreciate your time and your um, your participation here. Rest, I owe you a, a pass to get to class. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Paris and Lachlan, if you need passes too, please let me know. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Ms. Hall, Ms. Martin, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your uh, your uh, insight was incredibly valuable for us yeah, here. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us join. Thanks, Lisa. I really appreciate Thanks. your help. Of course. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye. wonderful day, everyone. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us. Bye.